we've been studying a series called The Armor of God, and today we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Well, you know what you use helmets for. Helmets are used to protect your head. You'll see little kids riding bikes. Why do they wear helmets? They wear helmets to protect their heads. You see construction workers and they have helmets on. Why do they wear helmets? Again, they wear helmets to protect their heads. Sometimes you'll see a policeman that has a helmet on. And that's because he's going into a place where there's going to be action or, or violence. Well, he, use, he, he puts on that helmet to protect his head. Soldiers, wear helmets to what? To protect your head. And God wants you to wear a helmet, the helmet of salvation. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to protect your head. And what's in your head? Your mind's in your head. God wants your mind controlled by salvation. So today we're going to talk about the helmet of salvation. Paul, in Ephesians, the 10th chapter, he is closing up the book, this letter that he's written to the, the church there. And he says this, he says, finally, brethren, see, he's giving them what they're going what they need to be able to walk out all those things that he's taught them. And what's that? They need, need the armor of God. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, world forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. What God's saying? Hey, you're not wrestling against people. You're wrestling against the demon, against demonic hosts and the devil. Then this is, therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand, stand firm therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with a preparation of the gospel of peace. And then it says this, having taken up the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench away every fiery dart or every flaming missile of the evil one. And then it says, Put on the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. God wants you to put it on. See, Paul had this spiritual revelation as he looked at the Roman armor. At that time, the Roman soldiers had the best armor of any other nation. And the piece that we're, that, that we're going to talk about that, that Paul saw this, as a spiritual armor for his, God's people was this helmet that the Roman soldiers wore. See, the Roman soldiers had the best of all helmets. And in the back of their helmet, this metal helmet was a a metal strip that went clear over the top of their neck right to the shoulders, and it covered the whole back of their neck. So if anyone got past the shield, the, the shield, which was like a door, then or was able to sneak up behind them, and they wanted to take off their head as they swung that sword, what would happen? Well, I mean, it would, might have been a blow, but it, they would not be decapitated. And then the other part of the Roman soldier's helmet had these, um, this part that went down across their temples, and there's just a little space for their ears so they could hear, and went over across the neck again. Let me say that again. They had this to cover. It's covering their heads from blows to the that flaming missiles or the arrows, the flaming arrows or the swords or rocks or whatever was being thrown at them was protected by this helmet. And then they had this, this the helmet which went over top of their head, went down right over to their forehead, and there was a, a little metal piece that came out about three inches, went out. It was kind of like your car bumper. So what, if something hits the bumper of your car, it jerks jerks and but it doesn't usually hit the metal of your car it it bounces it off well they had this strip of metal that protruded out like a bumper so if a sword hit the helmet it would first bounce against this thing and not have a direct hit on on their skull now god wants you to know he's got a helmet for you that will protect your head that's better than the Roman soldier's helmet. This is the helmet of salvation. And I'll tell you what, Jesus, when he talked about the devil, he said this about him, that he was a father of lies. He's a liar. He told, called him the father of lies, that he was a liar. 
and everything that comes out of his mouth is lies and twisting and turning of the truth and deception. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In Revelations, it says that he is the accuser of the brother. He comes to accuse you before God. He comes to torment you and make you feel that you're unworthy, that you're not good enough. But God says, I have this helmet for you. It's the helmet of salvation. And this helmet of salvation is what Jesus Christ did for you. Now, I want you to know the Bible talks about the helmet of salvation in different places. In the Old Testament, it talked about the helmet of salvation. In Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59, that chapter starts out like this, and it says, Behold, the Lord's hands are not so short that he cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that, you, that, so that he does not hear. And then it keeps going on verse after verse after verse after verse of all their sins and all their spiritual blindness and all the ways that they've lied and cheated and, and sinned against God. And finally, God says this. He says, as he's watching and he's seeing how helpless they are, that there was no one to intercede for them, the Bible says of, of him in Isaiah 59, he's, he's looked with astonishment that there was no one to intercede for them, and so he brought salvation to them. He put on the breastplate of righteousness, and then he put on this helmet of salvation on himself. Again, he came to intercede. That's what the new testament is all about the new covenant it's a new covenant it's a brand new covenant god has made a way for us now through jesus christ he is the great intercessor he said he was astonished that there was no intercessor so what happened jesus christ interceded for us isaiah 53 talks about it when when it t says that it was that pleased the lord or pleased the father to crush him but, the, but it says, but the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he would see his offspring, he would prolong his days, the good pleasure of the Lord would prosper in his hands. And as a result of the anguish of his soul, he would see it and be satisfied. For by his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many, for he will intercede for the transgressor. He interceded for us. I'll tell you what. The Bible says in, uh, at the Last Supper, and it's in every Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talks about Jesus lifting the cup up and saying, drink of this cup. This is the blood of the new covenant, which will be shed for the forgiveness of sins. It's the blood of the new co covenant. And Matthew specifically talks about this blood that was shed for the forgiveness of the sins of many. You know, this new covenant, what does it give you? Well, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Hebrews all says this, you've got a new heart and a new mind. Salvation's come to you, a new heart and a new mind. God's laws and his ways are written upon your heart now. Now it's not you're trying to keep it, but now you can keep it through Jesus Christ. The armor of God is this, we're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he is salvation. The Bible talks about him being the horn of salvation. And the Bible says in Acts 4.12 that there's salvation in no one else, for there's no other name that's been given among men by which we must be saved. He is the horn of salvation. He is the Messiah. The Messiah is what? The anointed one who comes to save. He came to save. He came to deliver. He is salvation. And he wants you to put it on. Put on this helmet of salvation where your mind is thinking about what God has done. What was accomplished in this salvation? Yes, a new heart, a new mind. But he also, he, in this salvation, there's healing. In this salvation, there's forgiveness. In this salvation, there's deliverance. In this is salvation, there's prosperity. In this salvation, there's nothing missing. Paul said it in Romans, the eighth chapter. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will we not, all, how will we not also through him freely give us all things? It's this great salvation. And then it goes on. 
We'll bring a charge against God's elect. God's the one that justifies. Who's the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised from the dead, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, who intercedes for us. God's just saying, hey, you know what? This salvation brought you everything. Now, Jesus Christ, he's paid the price for you. He's shed his precious blood for you. He's risen from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God. He's interceding for you. And that the in Romans, the eighth chapter, it starts out with this. There's no condemnation now. Why? Blood's been shed for you. There's a Savior. He's done it for you. It's not about your righteousness. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got a new heart and mind. Now you can walk out this righteousness through Christ Jesus. Now, all of us, the Bible says, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that sometimes we, don't, we haven't got that helmet completely on right where we're not thinking with that new heart and that new mind. But I love this. The Bible says this, and this is salvation. Ephesians, the second chapter, by grace you've been saved. What? Salvation came by grace. What's that? Grace is God's favor. It's God. He did it for you. He did it. He did it for you. He loves you. He did it for you. By grace you have been saved through faith, and it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God not as a result of works. Let me say that again. It's not your works. It's not a result of your works. By grace you've been saved through faith, and it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of a result of works that no man should boast. When the devil comes to you and tries to make you think that you were not good enough, you didn't do enough, then again, you put on salvation. You know, this salvation, this salvation, it's from Jesus Christ. It's his righteousness that I put on. It's his goodness I put on. It's all about him. I'm putting it on. It's his righteousness. It's his salvation. I'm putting this on. As I was praying for this message this morning, God began to give me little pictures as I was saying, Lord, what is the helmet of salvation? What does it do? Well, first I saw this, the helmet come on and then it had wings on it. And I thought, what? What is that? And the Lord said, heavenly minded. They're heavenly minded. They're thinking about what salvation brings you. Because yes, it saves, it delivers, it heals, it brings healing and, and prosperity and blessings. It opens the heavens for you. But you know what? The Bible talks about the hope of salvation. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we, we had the helmet of the hope of salvation. What is that hope? Well, hope is a cheerful expectancy that God's on the move. He's doing something wonderful. That he has something great in store. And what's that? Well, the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish. You're not going to die in your sins now. You should not perish but have everlasting life. There is a heaven for you. There's a place that the Bible talks about that he's gone to prepare for you. The Bible talks about it in John, the 14th chapter, where he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And all throughout the scriptures, it talks about one day we're going to stand before him. In Revelations, it talks about this new place, the, this new Jerusalem that's coming down, this place of heaven that God's prepared for you, for those that love him. It's his promise. And sometimes I'll just, I mean, the battle will be so fierce. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but I'll be like, oh. I was thinking, how much longer? And then I began to think, you know, this is our lives here on earth as I'm fighting. You know what? Our lives here on earth are so short. They're so short. Lord, very soon I'm going to be with you. Very soon, Lord, I'm going to receive the reward for walking with you, for living for you, to honoring you. Very soon, Lord, I'm going to see you face to face. Very soon I'm going to be in heaven with you. It's the hope of salvation. You what? You put it on. You keep your mind. You put focus your mind on what Jesus Christ has done for you, what he's bought for you. He's redeemed you. He's saved you from hell. He's given you eternal life through faith in him. And then as I was praying, I saw this, um, this shower handle that you could, like in a shower that you could put over top of you, and it's just washing. And I'll tell you what, this salvation washes your mind. Again, you have a new heart and a new mind. And as I looked, I saw as, that, that, as he's holding this washing, 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 I saw like someone come and take the pulse of this hand. And I want you to know 
that this salvation lets you know who you are. Who are you? You're the saved. You're the delivered. You're the justified. You're the healed. You're the whole. You're the blessed. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is yours. You got a new heart. You got a new mind. You got favor with God. Hey, you, this, that's what you are. And as you take the pulse, see, God wants this helmet on you because as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If you see yourself, as a mighty warrior, as you see yourself as someone that's saved and justified, filled with the Spirit of God, on fire for God, as you see what salvation's done for you, then you know what? It's a battle axe against the enemy. It, it protects your mind, what the enemy tries so hard to get to, because if he can get to your mind, then he can bring havoc and destruction to you. But God says, put on this helmet of salvation Put it on. I saw this roller coaster and, and um, this, these hands holding on tight. They're going zoom, zoom. And I'll tell you what, some, again, sometimes the battle is so fierce. But again, when you know that you have salvation, when you know, when you put that on, you know this, that Jesus Christ has already won the victory. You just walk it out. Just keep on walking it out. You just keep on walking it out. You keep believing you're the saved. You keep believing you're the healed. You keep that helmet on. You just know that he's done it. So let me say this again to you. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God. Put it on, put it on, put it on, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil and let's switch down to verse 17, where it says, put on the helmet of salvation. Put it on, put it on, put it on. You have the mind of Christ. You are the saved. You are the delivered. You have a wonderful day. And know this, God loves you. He loves you. Oh, this God loves you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh, God, you the lifter of my head.